Order! Oh, order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Tonight, our panel is the Conservative International Development Secretary, Justin Greening, Labour's Chuko Muna, who returned to the back benches rather than serve in Corbyn's shadow cabinet, the Green Party's first appointment to the House of Lords, Jenny Jones, the Mail on Sunday columnist, Peter Hitchens, and the writer, broadcaster, and professional poker player, Victoria Corrin Mitchell. And as ever, if, if you want to join in the debate and the argument that goes on here tonight, you can text or tweet our hashtag BBCQT. You can follow us at BBC Question Time. Text comments to 83981. Push the red button to see what others are saying. Let's have our first question from Zaid Ahmed, please. Would you support junior doctors if they decide to go on strike? Would you support junior doctors if they decide to go on strike? Justin Greening. Well, I think... Um what needs to happen is people need to get around the table and talk through to getting a, a proper solution to this junior doctor's um, contract change. What we're trying to do is make sure that the NHS can work seven days a week and really provide outstanding services at the same time. We also know that many junior doctors are completely overworked at the weekend and in fact there are some that work over 91 hours a week. So these two things go hand in hand. Um, three years ago, the government started negotiating with the BMA. Clearly, um, we've not reached a conclusion with them yet. Jeremy Hunt put a new revised offer on the table yesterday. And I, I think what we all need now is for people to perhaps set aside the discussions and the arguments that they've had up until now and just get round the table and, and work through these, di these differences. Because in the end, you, I think... Would you oppose them if they, if they decided to strike? Would, you, would the government say that's not right, you shouldn't? Or would they say, well... You, we've, we've done our best, you've, had your, you've got an absolute right to go on strike. I mean, I've talked to junior doctors in my constituency and I understand their frustrations. I just think in the end, they're hugely committed to the NHS and I think the best thing that we can all do is actually get round the table and talk right. and find a resolution that means they don't feel they need to do that anymore. Victoria. Now, as I understand it, it's rather difficult, though, for them to get round the table and negotiate, because haven't they been told by Jeremy Hunt that if they don't basically agree all the proposals, it'll be imposed on them? So, I think they're allowed to quibble with one thing out of 23. How can they sit down and negotiate? They're being too threatened. <laughs> the question, I mean, I would. I'd support them if they went on strike, because not just the issue of... Obviously, the immediate medical question, do you really want to be treated by somebody who's working a 91-hour week? I mean, that's sort of... When you try and do the maths of how many hours that is a day, it's sort of terrible. There's a bigger question as well, though, which is, I believe the idea is to define overtime as after 10pm and Sundays. And I think most of us are worried in the age of mobile phones and the internet. I think we probably all worry, where does work finish and life begin, don't we? we when is our home time? And if the government, whether it's about doctors or anything else, if the government is ready to define home time as after 10pm and Sundays, I think our way of life generally is going to be sunk. And, you know, the, the French go on strike if, if their lunch hour is cut down to four hours from the, the normal five. So I think if doctors are going to be in the vanguard of saying, no, I'm sorry, you know, if, if you're not at home by eight o'clock and on a full weekend, you're in overtime. If they're going to defend that, uh, good luck to them. Um, I'm a junior doctor um, and I've been balloted for strike action today and thank you Victoria for bringing up something that not many people are aware of. So the government is quite ready to say that the BMA won't come back to the table. What a lot of people do not realise is that the BMA is unable to come back to the table until we agree to 22 non-negotiable preconditions. In my view, that is not a negotiation. Mm. <laughs> Peter Hitchens, and then you can come back. Peter Hitchens. I, I don't think doctors should ever go on strike. I, I just don't think it's something they should do. 
Uh, I th it's, it's one of those things where you, you, you have to say this is a job which requires you to be available at all times. And it I doesn't mean I don't sympathise with the case. It just means I think that the strike weapon is not one you can use. I, the other thing which seems to me to be very noticeable is that the doctors have completely ceased to trust Mr Hunt. And there doesn't really seem to be any real communication between them. I very much hope... Uh, that the government finds some way of reaching a settlement which doesn't involve the doctor's strike for the sake of all the patients who will suffer as a result of that, because they will. These, I remember as an industrial reporter, any pledge one ever had from any group that the, that the public would not suffer from any withdrawal of emergency, emergency service was never actually fulfilled. It always does hurt people. So I think that it should be avoided, but I think it may have to be avoided by Mr Hunt departing and being replaced by somebody better able to negotiate. Yeah, just, just yeah, finish your point. What, what are these other... You, you say you're only able to negotiate one point? Yes, which there's is one point. I can't remember off the top of my head which point right. exactly it was, okay. but there were 22 non-negotiable points. What I wanted to say was that we have 50,000 junior doctors whistleblowing. Jeremy Hunt says he endorses whistleblowing in the NHS. We are standing up and saying this contract is unsafe, it's going to be fatal for the NHS, and he will not listen to these okay. 50,000 whistleblowers. And, and you, you're up there, Mr. <laughs> I also agree that obviously if they do go on strike it, it's not a, not a good idea but I think that it actually shows how bad the situation is that these people who know how important their jobs are think that the only option is to go on strike because they're obviously not being heard and issues aren't being sorted out so they believe that strike is the only option and I think that just shows how bad it really is. Okay and you sir in the second row. Is a strike really the best way to get the public on side anyway because when the tube drivers did it it didn't really win me their support when I had a three hour journey home from work. And so you, you think that it's not, they, w they would be wrong to strike? Not necessarily wrong, but it's not going to win me, win their support. Chukwemuna, what do you think? Well, I mean, I agree with um, what the lady just said. I mean... Uh, Which lady? Uh, the, 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 last, yeah, uh, the, okay. the last contributor. I, I don't support a strike action, but I'm certain because it, it's going to disrupt the services provided to my constituents, but I'm certainly not going to condemn uh, the doctors uh, for doing it. And really, what this is emblematic of the cack-handed approach this government has adopted in relation to our NHS generally. Dr Sarah Williston... <laughs> uh, Dr Sarah Williston is the Conservative Chair of the Health Select Committee in the House of Commons. She's herself a former GP, and she has criticised the Health Secretary for basically negotiating in the media uh, with the doctors without properly negotiating with them direct. Is what he's proposing wrong, apart from the way he's negotiating? My I mean, biggest... Well, uh, my... Uh, 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 Peter says that his, his way of negotiating is pretty hopeless, but what about the issue of my, increasing well, the pay by 11%? Well, well my, my biggest concern, and the junior doctor, I, I think, I, I didn't get your name, I'm sorry, just touched on it, is I, listening to the junior doctors I have in my constituency and also seeing uh, some of the reports, pay, look, the pay actually I don't think is necessarily the biggest thing here for many of the junior doctors concerned. You don't become a doctor because you want to make money. You become a doctor because you want to care for people and save lives. But the issue here is that one of the things they're going to be doing is taking away the financial penalty which applies to hospitals where they overwork junior doctors. And this obviously acts as a deterrent and prevents uh, our junior doctors becoming so overworked, so over and so exhausted that that impacts on the treatment that we're getting. That is a big concern. I think the second thing is, is in the recent survey, I think 70% of junior doctors are saying that if Jeremy Hunt does what he is threatening to do, which is impose what is currently on the table on junior doctors, 70% of them say they will go abroad. And I'm also worried because of the changes which have been made to the um, rotoring for weekends and evenings and how you get paid, that you're actually going to find it's very hard to find junior doctors prepared to do that. But as I said, right. this comes on top of a wasted £3 billion reorganisation of the NHS we okay. promised we wouldn't get, rising waiting lists, and it's been completely, it, it's been handled in a completely cack-handed manner. It's disgraceful. Okay. You, sir. Are we not taking a very short-term view here where we try and save a bit of money and then end up driving incredibly skilled well-trained young professionals that want to dedicate their lives to working in the NHS and drive them away because the morale within staff that work in the NHS is being depleted day after day, not only by politicians that say that it's about money, which it completely isn't, um, but also mm. with just being overworked and drained 
and that is a pathway to destroying the NHS. Right. Jenny, I'll come to you in a moment, but Dustin, can you answer his point? Two things. First of all, this isn't actually about money, it's not about saving money and actually um, junior doctors will be for the first time actually having a cap on the amount of hours they can work so that they don't have to work unsafe levels of hours as they do now and in fact if you go on the NHS employers website there's actually a pay calculator there where you can go and check directly if you're a junior doctor how this new contract is going to affect you and actually overwhelmingly doctors, junior doctors will be doing better and they certainly won't be doing Do worse. better in terms of the money or the time, the hours they work? Well, we'll be capping the hours. At the moment, there's around 500 junior doctors who routinely yeah. end up breaching So can, can you hours. guarantee, Justine, therefore, that after the contract comes into effect, on the whole, junior doctors will be working less hours than at the moment? Yes, in the sense that you're at, the moment, giving a at the moment... At the moment, junior doctors, in some cases, are working over 91 hours a week. That's not good for them and it's not good because for the NHS. Because they're forced to because they choose to? Well, partly because of the way the system currently works. And, that, and one of the problems around that is how the junior doctors' contract work. But I'd like to just come back to the point um, that the lady in, in the, over there was making, which is, I think, actually, we do need to get back round the table and, and work our way through this. In the end... Um, we can have a debate on question time, but what's really going to fix this is the BMA getting back round the table uh, with Jeremy Hunt, and I hope that over the coming days that can happen, and that, you think and that, that negotiations can back move this ridiculous gun Jeremy to the head of the 25 non-negotiable points well, in order for them to negotiate. The BMA will get round, back round the table as soon right. as Jeremy Hunt removes Je the conditions. Hold on. Jenny, we have Jenny, let's hear from Jenny Jones. I want to come back to you afterwards to see what you made of what Justine said. Jenny Jones. This 11% pay rise sounds very good until you look at the conditions and then you understand, actually, that to get a decent salary, junior doctors are probably going to have to work even more hours and that is definitely unsafe. There's also the fact, of course, that junior doctors are probably nearly at the end of their tether. They are exhausted. And... Uh, that, I mean, they could easily decide to go abroad. That means all of our investment in their training, in their education, has gone and it's wasted. So this actually is a very false move. We all know the NHS is understaffed, underfunded, underloved, undervalued. And it's time that this government, instead of trying to break it down piecemeal and sell it off, actually understood it's a real, real social asset and should be supported. <laughs> And yes, I will support the strike, would support the strike if it happens. Um, it was a really eloquent defence of doctors and the difficult situation they're in uh, from you, Chuka. But at the end of the day, how can you, as a supposedly Labour MP, when the doctors are in this position, when they're not being negotiated with, when they're out of options, not support their right as a body of workers to strike? Your I party was built on unions. I support their right to strike, and I'm not condemning them for going on strike, but equally, I represent 100,000 people, and I want to make sure that they can benefit from the services that they need to be healthy. Um, and ultimately, I owe my ultimate duty to the constituents that I represent. All right, I'll take one more point, then we'll go on to another question. Uh, one in the second row from the back there. I've got two points. Uh, first of all... Um I work in a hospital setting and I work with doctors and the other day I was just really struck by one of the doctors who was already on shift and she said, oh, just another 12 hours to go and you could see that that was a struggle for her and she said, the way to cope is caffeine and chocolate and yeah, like I said, I was just really struck by that and the second point I just wanted to make or ask was, if not strike, what's the alternative? Talk. Well, this is the key thing. See, I'm afraid this is just a lot of hot air, and it is true what the chap said. Your exact words were, I wouldn't support the strike, but I wouldn't blame them for doing it. We just can't have this from politicians. I love everyone. Everyone's right. No one's wrong. Well, Victoria, so Victoria, on the Victoria, <laughs> Victoria it's, it's very easy for you to say that, but I represent people who often will be in need of very serious treatment. And if I was to support strike action, which was to hinder the treatment that they were getting, that would be the wrong thing to do, in my view. It's not easy and it for might, me to say that. Well, it is easy for you to say no, it. No, it isn't. And it sounds I good need and it'll get, doctors. It'll, I've it'll got get, a baby. It, I want doctors it'll, it'll to be available. But the chap but that the said, end, 
do it's not going to do anything. No, it won't get a clap. The chap there who said it's quite understandable that striking is not the way to get public sympathy. Yeah. It never is. It's always the double bind that workers are trapped in. Transport workers, doctors, they want the same thing as we do, safety, but how to go about getting it. Their means of getting it will alienate people. It won't get support, but they're stuck. No one will listen. Right. But, but what is the alternative? There is no alternative. They need to strike. OK. <laughs> we'll go on, we'll go on. I want to get through some questions.